My dear Deltons, I begin this broadcast by first thanking all of you for your understanding and cooperation in this very challenging period in human history. Except for some minor incidents here and there, our state has been relatively peaceful during the lockdown. It speaks of your trust and confidence in the integrity of the structures and processes we have put in place to combat the coronavirus pandemic. We are indeed very grateful for your support and partnership. The security agencies also deserve our commendation for their sacrifice, patience, and professional conduct. You will recall that on March 29, 2020, we closed down entry points into and out of Delta State as a priority step to keep the coronavirus pandemic at bay. Three days later, on April 1, 2020, we closed all offices, public spaces, and banned public movements and gatherings within the state, except for essential and emergency supplies to enable us to reduce the risk of transmission. These proclamations were made in exercise of the powers conferred on me by the Delta State Public Health Law, Cap P2 Laws of Delta State 2006, the Quarantine Act, Cap Q2 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, as well as the Infectious Disease Emergency Prevention Regulation 2020. We have every reason to believe that the lockdown has helped to limit the spread of the virus in our state. As of today, six cases of COVID-19 have been incidented. Five of the patients are doing well in our case management centers. And I'm informed that two of them who have had two negatives will be discharged this morning. Sadly, we lost one of them who presented himself late to the medical authorities. His test report, we turned out to be positive, was received after his death. The period of the lockdown, while enabling us to break the chain of transmission, also gave us the leeway to easily trace, identify, isolate, and test contacts of infected persons. As of today, we have a low virus spread in the state, and our health system can be said to be in a state of readiness, with the health staff fully committed and motivated to discharge their responsibilities in a professional, ethical, and safe manner. As we begin to ease the lockdown restrictions, the sensible approach is to do it in a gradual, systematic, an orderly manner so that we do not wipe out the gains of the past four weeks. We are very mindful of the fact that each day of the lockdown was tough economically and particularly agonizing for those in the informal sector who live on daily income. To mitigate the harsh economic effects of the lockdown, the state government distributed food items to all 270 wards in the state coordinated by a cross-section of leaders at the local government areas and ward levels. We are currently also expecting some food items from the federal government. Just recently, the federal government sent us three trailers of 50 kg rice. And from Can COVID, a group of businessmen who are, who are expecting various food items for and this will be distributed to the poor and vulnerable across the 270 wards when they arrive. At this juncture, I want to thank all those who donated generously to our COVID-19 relief fund. And I've directed that the SSG should publish their names with thanks, because a lot of Deltans and a few non-Deltans actually did respond, for which we are grateful. As we gradually relax the restriction of movement, I must caution that it is not yet Uhuru. Life as we have known it is still a long way off. We must therefore brace ourselves to adjust to the new normal 
in all our personal, official, and business dealings going forward. As an administration, we remain irrevocably committed to doing everything necessary to protect the lives and properties of citizens in the state, in addition to providing a safe and secure environment for them to pursue their dreams of success and happiness. In view of the foregoing, it has become necessary to partially lift the ban on movements within the state, effective Thursday, 30th of April, 2020. This is to enable our people to engage in economic and business activities between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. Security agencies will be on hand to ensure strict compliance with the time frame. That means that there will be an all-night curfew and I believe that those of you that listen to Mr. President would also have heard that. However, as we leave the ban on economic activities and business activities in the course of the day, there are some exceptions. Conferences, sporting activities, gathering of people in convention and event centers, sports fields, public and open spaces as well as recreational and cultural so communal activities remain banned until reviewed on the 31st of May, 2020. While barriers and weddings will be allowed, the social distancing rule, which is six feet apart, must be applied, and the number of guests and persons must not exceed 50. Our schools, both public and private, remain closed until reviewed on the 31st of May, 2020. Entertainment centers, including cinemas, bars, and nightclubs, remain closed until further notice. Restaurants are to operate on takeaway basis only. Why hotels will be allowed to open with in-room dining only. Therefore, their restaurants and bars and nightclubs remain closed until further notice. Why transport services? The keke, the taxis and buses are allowed to operate. Number of passengers shall be as follows. That is the maximum number of passengers. Two persons at the back for the keke, one person at the front seat, and two persons at the back for a taxi. That is a maximum of three persons. And 10 to a maximum of 12 persons for a 16 and 18 seater bus. That means you cannot have more than two people sit on a row that was initially meant for three persons. Our airports remain closed to passenger traffic to further notice. I've already directed the SSG to meet with the unions of the taxis and the keke to be able to ensure that they are properly briefed on the new norms. And a regulation has been signed this morning to that effect. And all those who break the rules will be fined and charged to the appropriate court. I shall be meeting with our religious leaders on Thursday to chart the way forward for our places of worship. However, all crusades and convention remain banned until further notice. For the public service, only workers on grade level 12 and above should resume work effectively Thursday, 30th April, 2020. This order does not apply to junior staff on essential service and emergency duties. Workers with comorbidities identified by the Ministry of Health or East Agencies can work from home. That is, those who have illnesses that will make them prone to dying if they get infected with the COVID. 
However, workplace protocols should be put in place for disease surveillance, prevention, including screening and use of face masks and social distancing. And this applies to both the public and the private sector. Let me reiterate that security agencies have been advised to ensure strict compliance with the above directives. Violators will be prosecuted without fear or favor. Henceforth, it is mandatory for all residents in the state to make use of face masks in the public. Anybody leaving his or her home must wear a face mask effective Thursday, 30th April 2020, to further notice. They must be worn in public places, including offices, markets, malls, supermarkets, saloons, hospitals, health clinics, churches, and mosques when they are allowed to open, as well as all approved gatherings of persons. Traders and market women are all required to wear face masks while carrying out their businesses. The local government chairmen are hereby directed to work out the modalities for the operations of the markets in their domain, especially with regards to social distancing and other sanitation protocols. Hairdressing and barbing saloons must never be crowded. Owners are hereby directed to restrict the number of persons inside to a minimum number that will facilitate appropriate social distancing. As much as possible, workers in this establishment should wear hand gloves. The state government will by tomorrow in the first instance, the state government will commence today the distribution of a million cloth face masks that was produced by the state to residents in the state using the local government committees chaired by the local government council chairman as channels of distribution. Meanwhile, those who can afford it are also advised to make their own procurements. The benefit of the cloth face mask is that they can be washed with soap and water and reused. There will be a continuation of the interstate lockdown for another two weeks, as pronounced by Mr. President. Only essential supplies, food, beverages, medicals, pharmaceuticals, Petroleum and agricultural products are exempted from this order. As we engage, as we engage a new normal, I assure all debtors and residents that we shall continue to put processes in place to limit the transmission of the virus by ensuring rapid identification of cases and contacts, more testing, Isolation and quarantine as necessary. We shall continue with staff training and motivation and provision of logistics and supplies for our health staff. Finally, I wish to appeal to us to please stay indoors as much as possible and only go out when it is necessary. We need not travel or visit persons for whatever conversations, business or action that you can conclude on the phone or by using other electronic media. Please wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Use alcohol-based sanitizers as an alternative if there is no soap and water immediately available. And it is very important that you do not touch your mouth, your eyes, and your nose with, with unwashed hands. If you fall sick with fever, cough, and or breathlessness, please do not panic. Call the local government council chairman, the counselor of your ward, the executive secretary, 
or the local health authority, the disease surveillance and notification officer in your local government area. You can also call the emergency operation center on these numbers. 080-31-23-0481-080-31-23-0521-080-31-23-0529. always and endeavor to use this time to strengthen your family bonds. Together, and with God on our side, we shall overcome. Thank you, and God bless you all.